Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Shadi Aqil. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of condolences to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, on the demise of His Royal Highness Prince Bandar bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Majesty the King expressed deepest condolences to the Saudi monarch, praying to Allah the Almighty to rest the soul of the deceased in eternal peace. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco on his country's glorious throne day. His Majesty wished the Moroccan king lasting good health and well-being and the Moroccan people further progress and prosperity under His Majesty's leadership. His Majesty the King praised the constantly developing and deep-rooted fraternal ties between the two countries and people. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa today sent a cable of condolences to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, on the demise of His Royal Highness Prince Bandar bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister extended utmost condolences to the custodian of the two holy mosques, praying to the Almighty God to rest his soul of the deceased in eternal peace. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister sent a similar cable of condolences to the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco on his country's glorious throne day. His Royal Highness wished the Moroccan King lasting good health and well-being and the Moroccan people further progress and prosperity under His Majesty's leadership. His Royal Highness the Premier praised the constantly developing and deep-rooted fraternal ties between the two countries and people. He also sent a similar cable to the Moroccan Prime Minister Saad al-Din Uthmani. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired today the Cabinet Session at Ghudaybiya Palace. Following the session, the Cabinet Secretary General Yasser bin Isa Al Nasser delivered the following statement. The Cabinet congratulated His Royal Highness on the occasion of the United Nations adopting the proposal submitted by the Kingdom to declare the 5th of April of every year as the International Day of Conscience which was in response to the initiative set by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister in Vienna this year. His Royal Highness welcomed the signing of the minutes of meeting for the establishment of the Coordination Council between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. His Royal Highness cited this initiative as a means of bolstering bilateral relations that fulfill the aspirations of the two kingdoms' leaderships in achieving fruitful cooperation in the political, economic, military, investment, and social fields. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed to provide all means of care and services for the Bahraini pilgrims. His Royal Highness also hailed the efforts exerted by the government of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, to facilitate performing the holy rituals of Hajj for pilgrims. Following that, the cabinet expressed its sincere condolences to, the, to Tunisia and the Tunisian people on the passing of former President B.J. Qadi Sebsi, recalling in this regard the achievements made by the deceased in serving his country and his role in the development march of Tunisia. After that, His Royal Highness the Premier ordered the execution of 45 developmental projects at a cost of 22 million dinars aimed at enhancing the infrastructure and facilities as well as to improve the services provided to citizens in the framework of joint municipal projects in various regions of the country. His Royal Highness then followed up on the conditions of old houses and towns and villages and asked the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning, along with the Ministry of Housing, to submit a report on the condition of these houses and the mechanism by which they are rehabilitated in a manner that is compatible with urban development. His Royal Highness also asked the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning to follow up on the condition of the Gufool area and meet its needs and services and utilities. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister followed up on what has been achieved in the implementation of the integrated strategy in waste management, including the recycling of construction waste, recycling of household waste and converting it into energy. And in a related matter, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister has directed to beautify the area around Tubli Bay 
and preserve its environment, especially the Avicennia trees, and to rehabilitate the Tubli Bay in a way that improves water movement and regeneration. His Royal Highness asked the Minister of Finance and National Economy and the Minister of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning to submit a joint memorandum in this regard. The Cabinet approved the recommendation of the Coordinating Committee led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, presented by Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, regarding the amendment of Decision 17 of 2018 on the identification of certain commercial activities that may be licensed to international companies. The meeting approved a draft law to fill the legislative void in the field of the environment, especially with respect to environmental waste, combating various forms of pollution, and protecting society and living organisms from all environmentally harmful activities in the light of international and regional conventions to which Bahrain acceded and decided to refer it to the Representative Council. The session discussed the addition of new specialties to the Strategy Committee and the addition of new representatives to its membership and decided to refer the proposal to the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs. The Cabinet reviewed the projects to be implemented and under implementation to develop the quality of social services, community empowerment and meet the requirements of securing the environment supporting sustainable development as well as achieve the objectives of the government's program and priorities. The Cabinet also followed up on the implementation stages of artery linking Bahrain with Saudi Arabia in coordination with the concerned ministries. The United Nations adopted the proposal submitted by the Kingdom to declare the 5th of April of every year as International Day of Conscience in response to the initiative launched by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa to encourage the international community to resolve disputes peacefully. The adoption of the proposal reflects Bahrain's keenness on playing an effective role and contribute to every international effort that aims to advance humanity and achieve continuous security and peace around the world. The announcement records a new national achievement for the Kingdom that affirms His Royal Highness's international status and appreci rather appreciation for His Royal Highness's initiatives and efforts that support the establishment of world peace. The UN stated that declaring the 5th of April the International Day of Conscience is a means of continuing the international community's efforts to promote peace, tolerance, integration understanding and solidarity to build a sustainable world. The UN called on all member states and world organizations to celebrate this day as appropriate to create a peace culture in all local and regional societies. The patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister of the launch of the International Day of Conscience at the United Nations headquarters in Vienna in April as the first initiative of its kind as part of the global cooperation aimed to promote a culture of peace, love and conscience. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister sent a message which can be considered the first document in the world in this regard in which he stressed a number of principles that were translated in the United Nations resolution on the 5th of April as an international day of conscience. His message reflected an integral vision calling for concerted efforts of the international community to activate the role of human conscience in achieving security, peace and stability in different parts of the world. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of sticking to peaceful means to solve international problems and conflicts in order to eliminate the causes of tension that hinder development efforts in the world. Looking at the high values contained in the message of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, his approach and vision can be drawn to a more secure and developing world, including, first, it must be emphasized that there is a correlation between the availability of security and peace on the one hand in the development that the people of the world aspire to on the other, which requires that the system of collective action focus on laying the foundations of this peace and ensuring its continuation by looking at the causes of conflicts and towards peace and stability. Second, emphasizing that peaceful means are the best way to deal with international problems and conflicts. War and conflict lead to the spread of devastation, chaos and destruction, 
to hinder the efforts of states in the field of development and put them years back. Third, emphasizing the importance of the efforts of the international community to achieve all that supports reconciliation among people on the basis of mutual respect, understanding and partnerships that support the efforts to face the problems of poverty, destitution and disease in some countries of the world. Fourth, to call upon the international community to shoulder its humanitarian responsibility in facing the tragic situations that many people are experiencing as a result of conflicts, food shortages, drought, epidemics and others which must be detrimental to the human conscience and strengthen its will to address and treat them radically. His Royal Highness the Premier was able to move the concept of global conscience into a full-fledged strategy that outlines a way to enhance cooperation among the different parties in the international community to fulfill their duties towards strengthening global peace and stability. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today sent a cable of condolences to the custodian of the Two Holy Mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, on the demise of His Royal Highness Prince Bandar bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince extended utmost condolences to the custodian of the Two Holy Mosques, praying to Almighty God to rest the soul of the deceased in peace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also sent a cable of condolences to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco on his country's glorious throne day. His Royal Highness wished the Moroccan King lasting good health and well-being and the Moroccan people further progress and prosperity under His Majesty's leadership. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince praised the constantly developing and deep-rooted fraternal ties between the two countries and people. The National Bureau for Revenue, the NBR, held two consecutive interactive VAT workshops to recap general and sector-specific VAT concepts, including invoicing and filing. Following a question and answer session, 138 attendees representing 85 entities were given the opportunity to visit a unique interactive demo center that provides innovative learning experiences to ensure effective implementation of VAT. Today's workshop is a continuation of the series of workshops organized by NBR to provide an inclusive platform for all stakeholders from the public and private sector in order to increase businesses' awareness of VAT return filing procedures ahead of deadlines.